Hey guys, today we're going to start a new unit on vibrations, waves, and sound. It covers two chapters, chapters 25 and 26 in our book. And the study guide is posted in the Google Classroom. This is the stuff we're going to look at today. So we're going to look at the introduction here. What is a wave? Why are we interested in this stuff? Uh, we're going to learn some wave terms, and there's a lot of them. So you're probably going to have to pause this one at least we can write this stuff down. Because you are going to want to take notes on this because this is just vocabulary so you understand what we're talking about moving forward. Uh, um, among other things, we'll look at the difference between period and frequency. These are ones that students tend to confuse a little bit. So that's why I'm making that its own thing on this list. Pay particular attention to period versus frequency. And then finally, we'll finish up with the wave equation, which is one that we'll be seeing in this unit and in the next one as well. It's a simple equation. Uh, but it's one that we'll see a lot. So first off, what is a wave? Um, up to this point, we have been dealing with moving objects. So you throw a ball up in the air and it hits something and it transfers energy to it. Uh, that's mechanics. Uh, now we're moving on to a different type of physics, which is about waves. And with waves, the energy itself moves from place to place. So if I have a rope and I flick the end of the rope, a wave will travel down that rope and shake the hand of the person who's moving the who's holding the other end of the rope but i'm not throwing the rope at them to transfer energy to them i'm just making a wave which travels down the rope and when that wave reaches their hand it shakes their hand uh, but the way but the rope itself pretty much has stayed in one place okay uh, and that that's the general idea with waves it is energy in motion rather than matter in motion so with a wave, energy moves from place to place, but the medium does not. Now, what is a medium? That's our first vocabulary word. The medium is the material that carries the wave. So I just talked about a rope. If a, if a wave is traveling down a rope, well, the wave is the wave, but the rope is the medium. Because if there's no rope, there's no wave in the rope. Um, another example would be sound. You probably know that sound is a wave. So you can hear my voice right now because my vocal cords are shaking the air and sending waves of energy through the air, which shake the microphone. And then through the miracle of electronics, uh, it shakes your speaker. It shakes, uh, shakes the little metal diaphragm in your speaker, which shakes the air and creates waves in the air, which come to your ear and shake the ear. Okay, so the waves are traveling from place to place, from my vocal cords to the microphone and from the speaker to your ear. But the air itself is not moving. I'm not like blowing on the speaker and moving air from my lungs to the speaker to make that noise. Likewise, the speaker in your computer is not blowing a stream of air at you to hit your, your, your eardrum and make it move. It's the waves traveling through the air which are hitting your eardrum, but while the air itself, itself stays relatively stationary. A third, another third example of this is if you see a piece of floating wood in the water, as, the, as waves travel through the water, the piece of wood moves up and down, but it doesn't uh, uh, surf along with the waves, okay? Um, most things in the water just stay where they are as the, as the waves pass underneath them. So the energy moves from place to place, but the medium does not. Okay, that's what is wave. Now we got some terms here. Uh, we're going to envision a, um, a wave traveling down a rope or down a string. So this straight line here represents the rope. And when I jiggle the rope, then the wave starts traveling along. And I'm going to make some copies of this. So basically, we're imagining a train of waves which are propagating from our left to our right across the page. OK, uh, let's start off with the one that students have the most trouble with, um, and that is the term amplitude. Let's move this aside, amplitude. OK, amplitude, I'm going to put it in here first, is the height of the wave or the, I'm going to be more precise with that, the displacement of the wave from the neutral position to the extreme. So see, I have two little green lines here, one right where the, the rope normally is and one right on the crest. And the amplitude is the distance from that neutral position to the crest, to the very top here. Um, since I've mentioned the word crest, I may as well put that in there as well. Okay. The crests are the peaks of the waves, the highest point, the maximum displacement. That really is the best place 
best way to describe it is the maximum displacement of the medium as the wave passes. Okay, and back to the amplitude again, because that's where I started with this. The amplitude is the distance from the neutral position to the crest. Okay, so it's not from this low point up to the crest, it's from the neutral position to the crest. Now, what about those low points? Those low points should have terms, have a name too, and those are called the troughs. Okay, like the trough in a, um, uh, when you're plowing a field, or a water trough that animals drink out of, it's a low point. So these lowest points are called the troughs, while the peaks, the high points are called the, are called the crests. Now the crests and the troughs are the most extreme motion of the medium, um, and the amplitude is from the neutral position to one of those extremes. So the amplitude could also be the distance from a trough to the neutral position. That would also be the amplitude, okay? Now, the common error that uh, students make is they think that the amplitude is from the cross, the trough to the crest, and it's not. Amplitude is from the neutral position to the crest or from the neutral position to a trough, either one of those. Draw a picture of this. It's easier to, uh, uh, easier to remember this stuff if you write them down. Okay, I'm going to drag all this down a little bit. Okay, the next term we have is wavelength. Okay, the wavelength here we go, let's do it this way. That'll work. Actually, you know what, I'll put it over here so it's slightly less cluttered. Okay, so the wavelength, wavelength is uh, the distance in the medium that it takes for one full cycle of the, of the wave, okay? So here I have it labeled from the, the waveform passing through the neutral position coming down, and then it comes up and then it passes down again, and that's the wavelength. It's a little easier to see wavelength as the distance between two crests. So it is from here to here, that crest. Um, I'm actually going to put another little black mark there, okay? Okay, that's the wavelength from crest to crest, but the wavelength could also be from trough to trough, right? And as I showed the first time, it's from where the waveform passes down through the uh, neutral position to where it passes down through the neutral position again. I'm pointing this out because students sometimes think that the wavelength is from here to here or from here to here. It's not. It's a full cycle. So from crest to crest, that's a full wavelength. Right now we have wavelength is pretty fundamental to waves. So we have an abbreviation for it, which is this Greek letter lambda. It looks like kind of an upside down cursive Y. That is a Greek letter lambda. And that is our symbol for wavelength because it comes up so often. Okay, so that's what we got here. Crests, troughs, what the amplitude is, and what the wavelength is. And of these, the one that students have the most trouble with is the amplitude. Okay, moving along here. Now we're going to get to period versus frequency 